Hi, welcome to this tutorial on discrete random variables and this is another one in my series. Previously we had looked at these three formulae for connecting the variance of a random variable x with a constant a. And uh, we did a few examples just based on these three formulae. But what I want to do here is just show you how we arrive at these particular results. Now first of all, let's just take this first one, the variance of a constant. We're saying that it equals zero, but why is that? Well, let's just say I had some observed values. Let's say we just call them x. And those observed values were, say, a 10 and a 10 and a 10 and a 10. OK? Four tens, say. And if I plotted those observed values on this scale here, what are they going to look like? Well, obviously, we could just put one of them there, a 10 there, a 10 here, a 10 here, and a 10 here. They're all exactly the same. So what would I expect the mean to be? Well, the mean would clearly be 10. They're all exactly the same. Or I could add these all up, get a total of 40, and divide by 4, get 10. So the mean is 10. Now what does standard deviation measure? Well standard deviation always measures how scattered the points are about the mean. Well if the mean is 10, let's just draw it in there like that, if the mean is 10 then how scattered are these points about that mean of 10? There is no scattering so it turns out that the standard deviation is zero. Now variance is always the standard deviation squared. So if the standard deviation is zero, then clearly the standard the variance I should say is going to equal zero squared, which is going to be zero. And this will be true for any constant value. So we've got that the variance of any constant would be equal to zero. Now for this next part, let's just suppose we have some observed values, say 1, 3, 4 and 8. And to keep this fairly short, let's just say that they occur with a frequency of 1. Okay. Now, we could work out the mean for these values, x. If we were doing that, let's just put it down here, the mean would be worked out as being the total score. If you were to add these all up, you'd get a total of 16, and divide that by 4, and your mean would be 4. Other ways you could do this would be from probability distribution table you'd have the probability that your random variable x equals the observed value x. And those probabilities would be a quarter. You've got a 1 in 4 chance of getting those scores. And you could use the formula E of x that we've discussed in the past. E of x, remember, you just do the observed value times the probability and you repeat that 3 times a quarter, 4 times a quarter, 8 times a quarter and total it all up and you should find you still get that value 4. Now what we could do is put these observed values on this scale. If we did that, we would get something looking like this. So we've got our mean there of 4 and our observed values 1, 3, 4 and 8 plotted. Now suppose we were to add, say, 3 to every one of these observed values, we would have x plus 3. Our new values would be the 1 plus 3, that would be 4, 3 plus 3, 6, 4 plus 3, 7, and 8 plus 3 would be 11. And if we were to work out the expected mean for these values here. Remember, they're going to occur just the same amount of time, same frequency, they're going to have exactly the same probabilities, 
And if you worked out what you, the mean would be for something like this, you'd find it comes to three more than what we had before. The mean comes out to be seven. And this shouldn't come as any surprise. In an earlier tutorial, what we said was that if you've got a random variable and you add a constant to it, in this case three, you end up with e of x plus that constant three. So you're going to have e of x, which was four, four add three is seven. So you're going to get seven. Now what's that going to mean when we look at this chart here? Okay. Well, what we are doing is raising the mean, so it goes now up to 7, and all the points, they move up by 3. And we get our new observed values, 4, 6, 7, and 11, as you can see here, 4, 6, 7, and 11. Now, what about the standard deviation? The standard deviation measures the scattering of the points about the mean. But do you notice the scattering of the points hasn't changed? And variance is the square of standard deviation. So if the standard deviation hasn't changed, nor will the variance. And it won't change whether we move it up or down, whether we add or subtract a particular value, a, a constant. The variance never changes. So that's why we have this result here, that the variance of a random variable x, whether you plus or minus a constant, always remains at the same variance as it was before you added that constant. OK? Now suppose we took our observed values and this time we multiplied them by, say, 3. So we get 3x. So our new values, our new observed values, would be 1 times 3, which would be 3, 3 threes 9, 4 threes 12, and 8 threes, there'll be 24. And if we were to work out the new mean here by adding up all our observed values because they occurred with a frequency of 1, you'd find that you'd get a total of 48, and if you divided that by 4, you end up with 12. And you'll notice that this is three times more than the mean that we had here. And again, that shouldn't come as any surprise, because do you remember when we discussed about multiplying a random variable by a constant, in this case 3, three times that random variable always worked out to be that constant times e of x. Now, if we were to plot these observed values now on our diagram, we would get something like this. You can see our observed values here, the 3, the 9, the 12, and the 24, as we had here. And I've drawn in the mean, the mean of 12. And what you should notice is that the points are now scattered far more from the mean than what they were here. Now if you were to work out the standard deviation of these points, the original points, the red ones, from the mean of 4, you'd have found that that standard deviation, let's just mark it in here, we'll just call it SD, the standard deviation turns out to be 2.5495 and so on. Now if you were to work out the standard deviation of these points, you would find that what you get is 7.6485 as that standard deviation and so on. And what happens is that this number is connected to this number. It turns out to be three times more than what we had earlier. 2.5495. You can check it on your calculator. What we have is a result that basically if you multiply a random variable by x the standard deviation of that result is exactly the same as that constant times the standard deviation just as the random variable x. So in our case our a was 3. 
three times this particular standard deviation. Now when it comes to variance then, remember that variance is the square of standard deviation. So our points now, when we look at the variance of 3 times x, it turns out to be 9 times 3 squared times the variance of x, just by simply squaring this formula here. Okay, well that brings us to the end of this tutorial, and uh, thanks for listening, and I hope that it was of some use to you.